Let me let me mm-hmm. ask you because I'm I'm curious for most people like I'm sure there's a lot of difficulty in this but like for someone that's experiencing like like chronic headaches like like I I had mentioned to you before we started recording so like when when I was younger my mom had really debilitating migraines and it actually like turned out to be like a whole hormonal thing that she had some issues that had mm-hmm. to to get handled but like I guess when we're looking at identifying you know like what the pattern is or what the triggers are like how do we go about that or or what does the process look like for identifying like what our patterns or what our triggers are like right <clears throat> so I mean, my first question when a person tells me that they have a headache uh, in, in in the office is the location it's all about location 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 <laughs> i mean i was the, my original title for the book because location is everything uh, so in, in your mom's case it, if it was called hormonal then that typically is going to be what i call bitemporal or both sides and yep, so when hormones are out of whack that's what's going to cause that location of of a headache so then we we back up from there and look at why is why are the hormones out of whack for example and and oftentimes that's because the liver is not breaking down estrogen is a huge one i mean there's about five different pathways in the liver that need to break down estrogen people talk about estrogen dominance for example um it could likely be because there's a, a methylation path pathway in the liver that's not breaking down properly so we get some b12 going or get that pathway uncongested if you will and then that will allow those headaches to get better um i mean in that i mean from the the wow the oh no kind of perspective that same methylation pathway um it activates the tumor suppressor gene so when that pathway is not functioning right then we lose the ability in other words it's under functioning and we lose the ability to suppress tumor cells right so wow. then have that, that big like oh no <laughs> right so right. all right it's not just then it's not just a little you know nuisance of a headache anymore it's like hey we need to head this off before before we have you know more dire consequences mm-hmm. and and i guess when we're we're looking at that like once we've identified it um, I guess, what does the protocol look like for solving it then? Because as you mentioned, like there's, there's, it could be hormonal. It could be, there's some dietary issues. There could be environmental issues. And I guess like, so once we've identified that, what does kind of that protocol look like for solving it? And then I guess as well, like, since we don't want to cause it again, like how mm-hmm. should our lifestyle actions change after that? Yeah, perfect. So <clears throat> that's where the fun part as a clinician is helping a person identify those triggers yeah, in that methylation example I just used, I mean, it could be as simple as taking a, a good B12 supplement. A, a methylcobalamin is the active form of B12. So it could be as simple as taking B12 now, you know, till death do us part, so to speak, uh, or, or uh, folic acid. Those are uh, very big in, in helping that pathway work. Uh, could be as simple as, you know, hey, chill out on the pesticide laden foods that are inhibiting that methylation pathway. Um, toxic metals are another very common thing that inhibit that methylation pathway. So, so the, the, the fun part clinically or, or through a book like The Headache Advantage, figure out or identify those triggers. Uh, get them out of the life and, and then the headaches are, are done and gone thing yesterday's news <laughs> so i guess when you're looking at solving something like that like we we live in a like an instant solution society dr verzal right like sure. everybody wants an immediate solution they want a pill for every ill and I, and i guess when you look at it if we're actually solving like you know uh, a chronic pa- a program of headaches like what what t- kind of a time period it look like to, like start getting relief on something like that yeah. So my, my bragging point is, and it sounds maybe a little overconfident, but it's really what gives me the confidence in, in putting this sort of material together. Literally a headache never leaves my office. So is that fast enough? Wow. <laughs> but I guess yeah. like, what about getting back into that chronic pattern though? Right. Like, because you mentioned right. like, you know, it might be like, okay, so we're low on B12 or we're low on this, we're low on that. Like, are we looking at like a period of weeks or months or like, what is, I guess to, to start seeing like, long-term changes what are what are we looking at like i know right. obviously depending on what kind of headache it is i'm sure it's different but like what have you seen yeah um great question there the reality is it kind of made the fun quip that the headache never leaves the office it gives me the confidence that yeah this is the right trigger this is this is what the cause is um then life happens right so we can get rid of the trigger you know tell them to chill out on tomatoes um they can never have a headache and ever or they may go splurge and have tomatoes because it was it was pasta night with the family and and then it comes back then they realize oh that is the trigger then then it's a it's a conscious volitional choice right uh is is it worth hanging out with the family having my having tomato to have a headache tomorrow right 
<clears throat> so that's that's really the understanding or, or really doctor as a teacher teaching the person what the triggers are so that then it's a choice. Um, most of the time we can get rid of those headaches pretty much all together uh, or even have a, a supplemental uh, antidote, if you will, that, hey, you know, if you feel a headache coming on, it's right sided, take this beet, beet based product to help thin the bile and get rid of it. And that can get rid of it right away without having to turn to, you know, drugs or anti inflammatories. I'm curious as well, like, you know, everything shows sugar laden, right? And, you know, the high fructose corn mm-hmm. syrup's even worse. And I know some of the artificial sweeteners can also like stimulate your blood sugar in like a, a similar fashion. I'm, I'm curious right. when, when we're looking at kind of, how much sugar we're having in our diet. Is that also playing a part in, in headaches as well? Like the amount of sugar we're consuming on a daily basis? Massive trigger. <clears throat> and sugar is ultimately going to exaggerate pretty much any other trigger uh, that is going on. Um, pastor I used to deal, um, used to be under, um, had headaches every Monday. And mm-hmm. that Mondays are traditionally a pastor's day off and, and he'd eat sugar. <laughs> most oh, wow. Of the day. So that was his primary trigger. Um, Praise God, I was fortunate enough to recognize at 14 years old that sugar didn't work well for me and I cut it out completely. <laughs> I haven't really had refined sugar in um, since that time. 